Yeah, so hi everyone. Well, my question was um, uh, if it's, if it was a good time to be fully invested, because uh, you know I'm thinking that volatility is creeping up. Yeah. So yeah, what was your opinion on this? Thanks. Well, well, I mean, what you had um, since since the start of the year. I mean, you, we all saw that, so it's not it's not rocket science, but. Um, um, Literally, VIX implied volatility, realized volatility have been above 20% since the start of the year. Okay, so that means instead of having the rule of 16, uh, when you get the VIX at um, at 16%, which more or less gives you a 1% move on the day on the S&P, you end up with 1.5, 2%, 3%, 4%, and 5% moves. Okay, so if you get really exposure. In, in your portfolio, and, and I'm thinking, you know, long, short uh, uh, growth exposure, that becomes really hard um, to, to handle those, those moves, okay? So um, I know yesterday we discussed, you know, how it works in the industry, and I said to some of you, you know, in the industry, the reality over the last few years, or let's say the, the last 10 years, if you get a drawdown of more than three to five percent, you know you you are in trouble. Okay, so that's for the industry. So not let let's pick for for you a million, um, and and for all of us, you know, does that make sense to be hundred percent invested? And when I say hundred percent, is hundred uh, percent long, hundred percent short. Okay, if we use like uh, no leverage, um, uh, so that means a growth of two hundred. Um, so so if you do that, you need to make sure that you know. The long and the short, uh, uh, um, let's say, mitigate each other, which is in reality super hard. If you look at this market where there is a lot of rotation, when from one day to another there are big moves, you most of the time going to be in trouble. So my view is, a, it's not necessarily my view only, it's, it, it, it's a trader's market. Okay, trader's market means, you know, you need to be benefiting and take benefit from, from, from those big moves. Um, and the only way to do that is to be uh, very light in positions um, and, and be able to be, uh, 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 you know, moving and, 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 and having quickly uh, exposure if you want. So in other words, what you're going to have is you're gonna, when you start the week, when you start the month, you say, OK, the, the market is at 39.50 on the S&P. Um, and you look at the global valuation, you look at, uh, at the macro, you look at the price action and you say to yourself, OK, where do I want to be? Do I want to be zero net long? Do I want to be 20 net, uh, 30, 50 net, whatever? OK, my view is, you know, and this is something that I teach in the 4 by 4 video series is, I think most of the time you should limit yourself to 30% net exposure. OK, net exposure, long or short. Unless you get a, a, a shit load of PNL in your bag and you can be taking more risk. Okay, so if you get more risks, your 30% could be 50, 60. Reality is very few people, and I know you're always gonna have guys that are gonna tell you, oh, I make 200, 300%, and you know, I'm the king of the world. You get very few people that make money this year. Very, very few. Okay, and, and, and I'm talking, you know, I'm not talking about two uh, playing with two options and, and making, you know, 100% on one option and saying we, we are we are up 100. So that means in, in, in terms of risk management, you're not necessarily in a position to be taking risks. Okay, and that doesn't mean that doesn't make, uh, 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 make any sense to be huge long, huge short, or a huge uh, uh, gross exposure when you have those moves. So if we look at yesterday, obviously this is a, a, a not liar move. Okay, this is an abnormal. This is a move that we didn't have over the last couple of years. Okay, uh, but but still, if you so that was a one day move. But if you look over five days, that was the same move, but the other direction. Okay, so this is something that I explained over the. Uh, last weekend on Saturday, when I said, you know, this is a, a totally schizophrenic market, um, we went up five days in a row from 3,900 to 4,150. And then in one day, you look at the chart, you look at the minute, you look at the at the 15 minutes, you know, it was nicely trending and then boom, and it goes out and, and it goes out very quickly. OK, so to me, uh, these days, I'm very happy to be a trader. OK, the thing is, I have very little visibility of what's going to happen next. I know that the world is slowing, and that's an understatement. 
I look at the big picture of the world, which is, you know, 25% US, 15, 20% Europe, same with China. And, and I know that the three of them are struggling. Okay, and I know that emerging markets are struggling big because, you know, the US dollar is too strong and yields are going up. So I know that the macro picture is, is not great. I know as well that, you know, we went down 15, 20%, but the reality is central banks are very hawkish. And I know as well that every single day when I read the tape, okay, read the tape as a trader as you're in front of your screen and you read the news, the reason are coming. And every single day, you're going to have profit warning. And what I was saying the other day, uh, last weekend, is I said, you know, many companies these days, what they are doing is they are one month away from the earnings season, okay? So what they do, they will be talking at conferences, okay? And today we had a very good example. We got two companies, we got Nucor and we got uh, Dow Chemical. And Dow Chemical came and said, oh, guys, by the way, you need to downgrade your numbers for Q3 by 600 million on both the sales and the EBDA. So if you look at the numbers, that is roughly, you know, 4%, 4 let's say, on the top line of revenues. So one month before, or two-thirds in, into, they're almost, the quarter is almost finished, okay? The quarter is almost finished, and, that, and they are telling you, oh, guys, you can downgrade the numbers by 3 to 5%. Okay, so, so me, can I be putting any position? And the other way around is I say, uh, if I'm bearish, um, five days ago, and I put a lot of exposure, and I go short at 39.50 on the S&P. When it goes to 41.50, and I'm short 50%, and it goes against me by 5%, and you know, in five days I'm done two and a half percent minimum. I'm not going to be feeling good. So, what we are trying to find these days is catalysts to play this market. Okay, to trade this market. Okay, so typically. When you look at your overall portfolio in the best, you know, in the best case scenario, you like to have 40, 60 percent of your position that going to be that are going to be core. OK, core one to three months. You're going to have positions that are going to be for longer because you are expecting for big moves. Uh, and then you're going to be playing between zero and 40 percent for trading. OK, when you get the VIX at 20, 25 percent, the zero to 40 percent is going to be the opposite. It's going to be 60 percent or more. So. What we need to identify, and I think, and I hope this is why I help you uh, uh, doing those, those, those weekly videos now, is trying to identify those catalysts. And in terms of catalysts as a trader, what you'll be looking at is really what's going to happen next. It's pretty obvious that this year, uh, uh, this week, it was CPI and it was OPEX. Okay, so CPI on Tuesday, you know, my view was, you know, uh, uh, CPI uh, should have come down a bit, okay? But actually, the core month on month was higher. So I would have been completely wrong. Am I going to be betting on that? No. But when I look at the chart, and I think it was pretty obvious on Tuesday, I show you the, sh the chart on the 15 minutes was trending higher. When it breaks, then it goes down the toilet, okay? So uh, a very long answer for a short question, immediate and sorry, this is very often my style, but um, I think you need to be very light in positions, um, unless you can structure the, the, the trade in a way that your downside is very limited with huge upside. So, so in other words, if you are playing for one to two or even one to three, with those moves, you're gonna be. There's a good chance that you're gonna be stopped out very quickly. Okay, because your your five ten percent stop loss is a two a, a two days move. So you better are. Uh, you know, waiting for some, reading the tape, reading some news, having some catalyst with you where you start a position and you can be increasing the position when it goes your way. Okay. I hope it helps, uh, Emilian. Jaime, good to see you. Hey, Greg, can you hear me? Congratulations for the second one. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can, can you, you can hear me, right? Yeah, perfectly. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Greg, for setting this up and yeah i i'm definitely gonna be getting busy in the next couple of months <laughs> you know how it is you know, being a, I know, I know. a parent i'm so, safe I, i'm no. better than you now i think <laughs> out of your email so just for the others too yeah. so there, there was an interesting question uh, i think it was the second part where uh, raimi sure. was saying 
based on his job, based on his family, does it make sense to track the market for, let's say, uh, he, he is living on the on the east coast? Okay, so the, no, the west coast, west, west coast, coast, sorry, west coast, and meaning that you get, um, you know, it's not the it's three hours different from from New York, and does it make sense to track the market for two, three, four hours? So my view is the following: is if you do so. It's like, you know, when you um, watch a movie, let's say your wife is watching a movie and you arrive 30 minutes after the start. So you're going to be having some idea of what's going on, but you're probably going to be missing a lot of stuff. And from my experience is when you, when you trade the market act actively, I mean, uh, it's like, you know, you need to be in rhythm with the market. And the market almost every single day is going to be tuning a different song, okay? Mm -hmm. And I hate coming and, you know, if I come, let's say today, if you arrive two hours after the open and you see the metals, you, you see Alcoa, you see uh, uh, all those names down by 5 6%. You don't know what are the reasons, okay? If you start the day let's say two or three hours before the open, you do the job, you know which companies are going to be talking, that is obviously a different story. I think the only way it can work for two to three hours per day is when you have a, a, a kind of special situation, active trading, or, or you do have like a specific strategy. And let me give you some example. Uh, uh, if you do ADR, which is arbitrage between Europe and in the US. So that means you try to find the discount or the premium between the US line and the European line. You can you could be trading, let's say, the last hour of the US market. That makes complete sense. You know, I have mm -hmm. a lot of colleagues in, in Europe um, that are making fun of me, saying, you know, Greg, you're watching the screen all day, whereas me, you know, I do the open in Europe and then I do the close and I work, you know, two to three hours a day. Okay, so that's one strategy. Another strategy could be, you know, if you are looking for in the US the imbalances that you have in the last hour and say, you know, my job is to try to identify these imbalances and, and, and trading them, that is another strategy. But literally, mm -hmm. if you do long short, if you're looking for catalyst, if you're trading the earnings and blah, 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 um, I think it's, al it's almost impossible because you are missing a big part of, of, of the show, okay? So mm -hmm. I, um, to me, it's, I mean, me, I, I hate it. I, I feel like, you know, uh, when I'm late and, and coming into the market and trading it, most of the time it's going to be, it, it, it is a disaster because um, it, it's like, you know, it is, you, you've been doing the mentoring. It's about putting all the different concepts, ideas, what's going on together. So uh, putting everything together changes obviously every single day okay yeah. so um, um, again long answer for a short question yeah. as long no, as you don't have a, a special situation or, or, or you know uh, um, uh, something like ADR trading I, I will not recommend doing that okay sure. um, understood no thanks for, for the clarification I, I really need to organize you know myself and my uh my question uh you know is definitely just regarding that that active trading um, yeah just just uh, wanted to kind of uh give a little background right you know i have been learning so much from from you greg uh, the past uh, couple of years and you know Thank now you. that i feel very comfortable with like the process of putting together a long short portfolio you know, I, I, I'm looking for that next level uh, to, to yeah. boost my portfolio performance, right? And like like you said, you know, I, and I think it's it's all about the act of trading when the opportunity presents. So I'm, I'm heading there. I'm going towards that goal. So my question is, you know, I feel that, um, you know, just recently I dived into several things like market profile, yeah. footprint, order yeah. flow. Yeah. which I think are essential yeah. uh, for the yeah. task. And knowing, knowing this, you know, I, I, I feel that some of my active trading was just, you know, luck. So yeah. my question is, you know, what, what is your setup for active trading and yeah. what tools do you use? Yeah. You know, can a retail trader have yeah. similar setup or come close to replicate what, 
what you yeah. what you have without incurring you know thousands of dollars yeah. a month to, to have that uh, set up. I mean, you're lucky because in the U.S. you get everything. Okay, so mm -hmm. you you have um, you, you get millions of traders, retail traders in the U.S., but y you can have um, good setup. So, um, in terms of of uh, um, just of the process and, and and what you can do and what you cannot do is when you came to me you i remember you said you know i've done x y and 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 now i want to get a process so together we worked on the process and the process is i have absolutely no issue with active trading uh, because you know this is my background and i've been doing that for years and years but i think this is totally relevant to tell people retail trader to do it if they don't understand how the market works okay and how you know, a bit of macro, a bit of quant, a bit of, of qualitative. Now you, you, you worked your, sorry for my English, your, your, your ass off to be where you are. So you, you can be doing active trading. So active trading, it, it's, it's, it's very important to get the right setup because you, your time frame is, is not the same. Okay, so everything is going to be much shorter. I mean, that is pretty, pretty obvious. So, so, so what do you need? So to give you an example, I have a Bloomberg. Uh, I got my four screens. Okay, so I could be showing all of my screen. And I got two screens that are with my Reuters, uh, the same as you. So icon that you have, I got exactly the same. And I got uh, uh, news from Twitter. Okay, so what is important when you are actively trading is reading the tape. Okay, reading the tape comes with the news and comes with the volume and the prices and the charts and all of this. Okay, so the thing is in the US, it's a beauty and it's a huge downside because you get 2000 stocks literally that you can be trading, which makes your universe so big that that is very hard. When I started, my bosses forced me to do 10 stocks only. Okay, so I started with 10 stocks, then 50, then 100, 200. So I think what you need to do first is to limit yourself to a certain universe, okay, mm -hmm. where you, where there is liquidity first, okay, because liquidity, even if we are small, okay, even if potentially you're not going to be making a 1 million trade, make sure that the liquidity is there for you. And my assumption here is we, you are trading equity slash CFDs, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily necessary options. So what do you need is you need, obviously, to have live prices. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's the difference between one to three months and literally trading on the spot. Trading on the spot, you need live prices. That sounds absolutely obvious, but some people are missing mm -hmm. it. What you need is you need a good access to the market, okay? That means a broker, in the US, you get tons of them, but when you put an order, it's not going to be taking 10 seconds. It goes straight away. That means as well that you're going to have stop order, that you're going to have limit order, that you're going to have whatever orders you want to, you need to have, where you're going to be able to execute those orders. Okay, so that is, this one is super important. Then what about how you, you get the information, how you, you generate ideas? So the way you generate ideas when you do active trading is you go, as you know, you've done the four by four, is you do a lot of special situations, okay? okay. Special situations, you can name them, you know, ADR, it's not really a special situation, but you know, rights issue, capital increase, uh, index uh, rebalancing, OPEX, and a big chunk of your job as well is reading the tape. What is, about re what is reading the tape is you see a news, and you trade the news, okay? Mm -hmm. So over the last few years, obviously, algos have been a big challenger. But what is quite funny is by the more you know, uh, the more you're going to beat those algos, okay? Because an algo, if it, if it sees a news on one stock, they don't necessarily know the competitor, okay? So I'll give you an example. If, let's say, uh, Dow Chemical today came with a warning, it takes a bit of time to realize in Europe that BISF or Axo Nobel or one of those names could be hit, okay? And we are not talking about trades, talking about trades where you're going to be making 5%. It's trades where you're going to be making 2 to 3%, okay? But it's active trading. So for that, mm -hmm. first thing first, what you need, you need to get the news, okay? So you get Twitter, okay, Twitter helps, but it's not enough, okay? So this is why, you know, 
for you, having for $100 something access to Reuters news is a no-brainer, okay? Bloomberg, you can't have it, but you still gonna, you can be paying, I think, for 10 or 20 or $30 per month having the news from Bloomberg, okay? Which is going to help you, okay? So that's, mm -hmm. here, this is the news. What you can have as well is having a squawk. So that's literally you pay $100 or $200 per month, and there is someone in a squawk box telling you, look, there is a profit warning, look there. So instead of you watching the tape all day, there is some, someone doing it for you. From my experience, because I'm... Unfortunately, I'm a professional. Most of the time, actually, I will see the news b before the squawk. So that means the squawk is, is, is useless to me, okay? Unless I want to be uh, doing something else. So that is for kind of the infrastructure. What you need as well now is you're going to be very active with your blotters, okay? So you're going to be putting your orders. So uh, it's like, you know, you're going to have one blotter left, which is the order, and one bottle right, which is, you know, for your stop order. Literally, let's say you buy, you're trading a, a Meta today, okay? So Meta is breaking and goes from uh, from yesterday from 154 to 150. Then in 10 minutes later, there is a squeeze and it goes to 150 to 154. If you do active trading, you're not there to be making 15%. You're there to be making 1, 2, 3, 4%, but with big size, okay? So that means... What, which goes, which something that goes with that is your risk management changes because the size is different. Okay, that doesn't mean that necessarily your PNL, uh, your stop loss should be in term in dollar terms much bigger, but that means that if instead of having a, a ten percent move, you you you're okay to have a two percent move, that means your size could be five times bigger. Okay, mm -hmm. five times bigger. Do you go in one go? Do you go in two goes? In three goes? Okay, so that's the first thing. What you're going to be looking at, you know, if you are trading the futures, let's say you're trading the S&P futures, mm -hmm. you get very talented guys that are on Twitter. There are two or three names. The guys are just insanely good. Okay, they will give you some levels. And they will, and, and the, way, the way those guys trade is support, resistance, and they look a lot at volume profile. Okay, what is volume profile is about understanding where is the fight. So if you take any single day, if you take any single week, any single month, any mm -hmm. single quarter, you want to know where the fight happened. Okay, and when I say the fight happened, it where is the volume. So if you look at the S&P, and you probably looked at it for, for, for the volume profile on the ES, the, mm -hmm. the big level was 4160, 4170. Okay, so we went there. We came back literally in four in, 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 in four days, in 24 hours to the next level, which is 39.50. And if we break this level, the next level is 38, 38.30. So if you ask any trading uh, 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 future trader, trader, it will tell you the next level is 38.30. That doesn't mean that you can't have any chop-chop in between, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the same with stocks. Stocks... So you can call it volume, volume profile, you can call it VWAP, okay? And what you're going to do is instead of having a chart where you're going to be looking at the daily over uh, uh, two to three years or five years, you're going to literally uh, uh, um, um, reducing your, your time horizon. So what I do is, if, I look at, if you look at my screens, uh, I have a charts hourly, sorry for my English, so uh, every hour, mm -hmm. Uh, for uh, around three months, okay? So literally you get an history over three months. So that gives me the big level over the last three months. But I like the hourly chart and I like the 15 minutes and I like the five minutes chart, okay? But when I trade five minutes, when I look at the five minutes chart, uh, uh, I'm not going to be trading a stock that's going to be moving 2% on the day, correct? So my job as a trader, and when you listen to any of those YouTube channels or those guys, they are never going to be mentioning a name that's going to be moving 60 bips on the day. My job is out of my 2,000 stocks or my 1,000 stocks in Europe and my 2,000 stocks in the US, finding the stocks that are going to be moving big time. Okay, And, I, and, and what is super hard is volatility doesn't mean that you're going to be making money. Okay, So you need to be finding the what my ex-boss used to be saying, the good volatility. Okay, good volatility means you are playing for the swings, 
based on what you see and based on your technical analysis, okay, and, and the volume profile. Um, and, and, and if you manage to do that, so if you do the five, I use five minutes, I use 15 minutes, I use the hourly, and I use the VWAPs, and I use the volume profile. So each time I see a news, you know, I got one screen with one screen with all my news. I got one screen which is all about comparing, you know, stocks, uh, the last versus the VWAP. Okay, you know, you've done the mentoring. You know how important that is to be looking at where the fight has been and for any single day, where is the significant volume. Okay, so if okay. if I give you hundred stocks, what I want to know is I want to know the five stocks that are trading the most. And not trading the most just because there is one block, because there is something that is happening or it's going to happen, okay? Because I know okay. that the, that is a natural catalyst, okay? And if on top of that, I can, I can now know very quickly that, you know, the VWAP has been at 98 or at 96, and then I know that the next level is at 92, I increase the odds, okay? That doesn't mean that the stock, you know, if I see a level at 92, is not going to go to 90, because what you have, you need to be looking at the overall market of this picture, uh, the overall picture of this market. What this market is telling you these days is it, it goes for the kill. Okay, so if you get a level at 100, you can make sure it's going to go to 98, because it wants to destroy you. Okay, and the moves are much bigger than usual. Okay, so suddenly what you do is, you need to, uh, uh, you need to look at the worst case scenario. Okay. We always look at the worst case scenario, but you know that these days, the worst case scenario is not going to be 2% against you. It can be 15% against you. In Europe, we have stocks that are moving 20% uh, every single day. That's something we never had in the past almost. Okay? In the US, you're lucky because you know, you, you're born and raised watching uh, those stocks and, and literally from day one, you, you've been watching at those stocks moving 30% every single day. And I'm talking, you know, multi-billion stocks. So, so to come back to your question, uh, um, uh, you need different screens, you need to get the filtering, uh, and you need to have technical analysis. And, and, and when I say technical analysis, my, uh, my conviction is, you know, technical analysis could be very dodgy. Okay, so we need mm -hmm. to be careful with that because it's very discretionary. It's just the way to identify levels where you feel good or bad and where you, you start to see the fight. And, you, and, and when I mentioned the five, the 15 minutes, the hour, the hour chart, the daily chart, I'm always talking about candles, okay? Why? Because with candles, for me, it's easy, you know, I'm a bit of an idiot. I look at the color of the candle and very quickly, I can tell if it's positive or negative. If it's just, you know, a price, I can't see the power. So if you put a five minutes, if you put an hourly chart, you see the color and you see the volume, you can see if it's, it, you can very quickly de uh, define if it's important or not. Okay, if it's mm -hmm. significant. Make sense? It makes sense. Uh, Greg, just one follow up on, on that. Um, what, what do you suggest uh, in terms of the size, let's say of a, of a list of a universe as to start with? Um, it's what's, a, uh, what's it, a good side? It's so w when we do the the session mentoring, classic filtering, we say two, three billion and above. Okay, so that's where we start. We get liquidity, um, and and more importantly, not only the liquidity, but we can rely on on on, on numbers. Okay, in terms uh, of universe. Um, you know, you can start with two things that are pretty obvious. You can start with the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, okay? Uh, you can start with the big names. Here, there is, a, there is a question that I can't answer for you that, you know, maybe your style is going to be mid-cap, mid maybe your style is going to be big caps, maybe your style is going to be mega cap. Okay, if you go for big cap, mega cap, if you do go for Nvidia, if you go for Tesla, if you go for, you know, those 50 names that are trading massively, you have no problem in terms of stop loss. Okay, so if you want to be buying, in the long run, those are the best stocks because it's like trading the futures. If you want to be putting 1 million or 10 million or 50 million uh, uh, national, that is fine. If you trade, a, 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 you've been putting some position on, on, on stocks that have, a five billion market cap, 
you know that sometimes if you even want to be trading, you know, $200,000, you'll be moving the stock by a percent. Okay. Oh. So I think first is, is look at, you know, a universe that is manageable, that where as well your, your infrastructure can, can live with that. If you get 2,000 stocks live on your PC, uh, live prices with VWAP on your Excel, uh, and you don't have a Bloomberg, it might be tricky, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's as well, you know, uh, making sure that your infrastructure will, 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 deal, uh, will deal with that. I will say the problem that you have with all the big names, especially in the US, is you don't have necessarily any edge. And when I say that is the whole world is trading those names, okay? My hedge, you know, when I trade France, when I trade Germany, especially when I trade France is I've been trading those stocks for 20 years, okay? So I know exactly, exactly when something is happening, you know, uh, uh, what is the, the second derivative, what is. When I'm trading Tesla, I'm trading Tesla like any of us, okay? So what is my edge? My edge is close to, 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 to zero, Okay, so um, in, in that case, should I be better off just trading the future? Probably, uh, I'm pretty rubbish at trading the future. Uh, but that would be so. You know, your skill is 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 clearly identifying good businesses. Okay, and and doing the fundamental analysis. Um, I think you're you're good at that. Maybe another skill could be you know reading the tape. I don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. another skills could be just putting on an Excel spreadsheet and every single night you do the ADR arbitrage and you know when the market opens in, in, in Europe, which is 8 UK here, you know it's going to be 12, it's going to be midnight for you and you know you're still going to be awake. Maybe that's a business to do for you, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but you know I will be limiting uh, um, going from your 2000 stocks to uh, 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 a, small, a smaller universe where maybe you're going to challenge yourself for two to three months, okay? And you say, okay, this is where I feel good. And, and you put in place as well an understanding of it. It's, and when I say an understanding of it is what is the, uh, the sector of that stock? What is the industry of that stock? What is the market cap, you know? Do I get any news on it? Um, um, it, it it's not, you know, every single day when I start the day is I, I, obviously I look like, all of us at the economic numbers, but I want to know which company will be talking. Okay, so today I listened for a couple of hours of, uh, uh, um, uh, there was a um, Essilor Luxotica, which is a company that, you know, making the, the, the Ray-Ban and all those, those glasses in the world. And, and, and I knew they would be talking and I, and I was expecting and I was hoping that, you know, by listening to the call, I will be sooner than the tape. Okay, so this is my job. Okay, uh, but if you just if you just look trading Tesla, you can. It's liquid. It's nice, um, but that's a different game. Okay, mm -hmm. makes sense. Uh, as always, Greg. Thank you so much. Always great to speak with you. It's good to hear you. It's good, uh, um, and 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 I hope you're gonna send an ID before. Uh, oh, definitely. Before Friday, <laughs> before Friday. that definitely. way Tomorrow. that way you'll be there on, on Saturday. <laughs> Good. Still, still, still sweating a lot, uh, <laughs> but I'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> Brilliant. Talk, talk soon. A a talk anyone soon. else has got a question? Don't, don't be shy. I mean, literally, there is no. Um, I hope you know the the whole idea is maybe, and hopefully, we're gonna do more. So, if you got questions, um, who, who's got any question? No one. Raise your hand. Uh, there is a lot of beeping. So. Um, uh, newcomers. Uh, I think there is a question here. There is a question from um, Lil Shkreli about uh, if you have time, if one is to do the mentoring of 4x4, what level of infrastructure would you say is necessary to buy or build to be able to perform research properly? Thank you. So. When, when I built a 4x4, four four, um, at that time I didn't have access to a Bloomberg. And I thought to myself, okay, what can we do um, if we don't have access to a Bloomberg or to Reuters? And um, so I found several websites and, 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 and I even managed, and I'm rubbish and I'm old, uh, 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 to build some, some macro to, uh, 
to do some data phishing. Okay, so in terms of infrastructure, if you do a bit of coding, you can do it. I think if you are a bit more advanced and to save a lot of time, you don't need a Bloomberg, but Reuters icon, uh, which costs a hundred dollar per month. I know it's a cost. I know it's not it's not zero, but it will help massively. So what I tell people is, you know, if you do the four by four, first thing first is you're going to be sweating like a dog. It's going to be taking three to five months, six months for you to connect the dots and building your infrastructure. If you want to go into the next level to get a quick process, uh, to get all the, the, the advantages of having an Excel API, you do that thing. So overall, you need a PC, you need an Excel AP, you need Excel and if you want to move further you can be uh, uh, spending hundred dollars I don't think you it's a necessity you can go on a website like um, uh, what's it called um, uh, marketscreener.com marketscreener.com you build tons of of, um, of macros and you're gonna get all the data uh, for free make sense uh, Rick Rick Ross is, is a good song. Uh, when deciding on a strike, is it better to always go closer to the money or better to go further out of the money for the better risk reward? Okay. Um, I, I think you, 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 you know a bit of options, but you need to, to, to dig a bit further. Okay, and, 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 and this is no judgment. Okay, don't, don't, don't get it wrong. Um, if you if you go further out of the money, um, obviously what you're looking you you are looking for a much bigger moves, okay? And I can tell you that from someone who kept on buying out of the money put in 2016 2017 and never made money because the market was not moving, okay? So in in the in, in the options, uh, one of the uh, tricky part is obviously where is my strike? Okay, where is my strike? If I have something at hundred and I and, and I buy a call, uh, if I if I do a hundred at the money call, then obviously I'm already um, I'm already in in the money, and as long as the stock goes up, it's fine. If I buy a hundred and ten, um, and I'm talking maturity, I need at least a ten percent move, and then. Based on the premium that I paid at the beginning, obviously my risk reward could be much, much bigger, but higher risk reward versus much lower odds, odds of, of this happening. Okay, so in other words, when you start the day, you say, okay, this is my, my S&P at 3950. Uh, 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 to give you an example, last Friday, so Rick Ross, I want you to put in the chat what was the the the, the, the price move on the S and P on the SPY last Friday for this week. What was the market pricing for the whole week? Are we talking a move of two percent, three percent, five percent, ten percent? Rick, please give me an answer in the chat. Would you say you were paying if market was pricing two, three, five, or ten? Weekly move on the SN, on, on the SPY. Are you gone? You don't want to say? So the market was pricing something like 2.5% move. And because I'm an idiot, I didn't pay it. Okay. But the reality is 2.5% when the market, when you had CPI, when you got OPEX, and when the recent moves were around 2 to 3%, that was dirt cheap. Okay. So that means in that sense, you are looking at what are the odds of something happening. Is it going, when you are 100, it goes to 105, 110, 115, 120, okay? And, and, and you put, when we do the mentoring, we do something, and, and I know Jaime spend a lot of time, I know all of my mentees that I pushed a bit have been doing it, is they build their options pricing and say, okay, what are my scenario? If my scenario is this thing to go to 105, how much can be my payout if it goes to 110 and I do this strategy? So you'll be looking at the money call, out of the money call, call spread, let's say 100, 110, call spread 105, 110, then, you know, out of the money, then, you know, some ratio stuff. 
and you you look at the odds okay and how much you can be making and sometimes you're going to say oh i'm better off you know going for something that is a five to one but what are the odds and and similarly if you look at a strategy that is six months down the line you're never going to be looking at a strategy where your your risk reward is is to be making two or three times your money you want to be making five six seven eight times your money okay so that means you are looking for the outlier and sometimes the outlier is very very cheap actually okay which act if you look at this straddle for this week it was dirt cheap okay so that means the outlier you know and and that's that's what some people are doing to a certain extent when they do this lottery ticket the lotto ticket the lotto trades where they do the outlier for for the day for for the weekly okay make sense someone is talking yeah that's that's me that's you the reason i was asking that question is because um well because i've been experimenting with some of my uh options and while well, i was doing like some like closer to the money uh, spreads and yeah. then you know those kind of worked out and then I was thinking mm -hmm. uh, and and you know how I was saying oh I put like I was putting like eight percent of my account into a certain yeah. other spread or just yeah. uh, option trade for the premium which I yeah I know it's a lot but I was thinking well what if I went a little bit further out of the money and you know within this time we have over tw about t over 25 VIX right now and then um, yeah. Well, so, basically, I would put le less of my account into those out of the money call or yeah. put options, so, so, and so, I would so, get yeah. a better risk reward. So, so, so two two things. We had the conversation before, but that's for the others. Um, it, it's pretty obvious that you know. I know some educators are saying ten percent on yeah. each position. That is that is a fallacy. That is completely insane. So you will yeah. realize that. I'm sorry for for, for the others. But okay. So the point, uh, Rick Ross. Know, know about it. So on, on the second point, which is uh, something that you touch base here, eh, eh, which is the implied volatility. Okay, so if you look at the Black and Shaw models, obviously a big component yeah. of your of your option is the volatility, your implied volatility. So on on, on the day you buy, is you buy yeah. your sell your premium, you get an implied volatility, and this implied volatility could be at thirty, could be at twenty, could be at ten. What you're going to have, as always, is you need to look at the benchmark. What is the benchmark is your VIX, okay? So if the VIX yeah. is at 20, there is a good chance that most of the stocks on the S&P will be close to 20, okay? If it at 10, that goes down. So in other words, what I generally do is, like all of us, is I look at the VIX, okay? If VIX first is telling me, you know, where is, is my benchmark. The second thing that I like to do, and, and, and that helps a lot, actually, when you start trading, is let's say you want to be trading JP Morgan and you want to be looking, uh, you're looking at upside, okay? So you look at, uh, let's say, a call spread. And you're looking at yeah. the call spread, um, uh, let's say JP is at 115, you do 115, 130, okay? And you'll be looking at the volatility, and you said implied volatility is at 28%. What I like to do is to say, okay, JP Morgan is the best in class, or until six months ago was the best in class. How much do I pay for the implied volatility of Bank of America for Wells Fargo? Is it that different? Okay. So if, that's, if, if, if it's different based on the earnings, that makes sense, okay, because the earnings yes. are not. But as they are in the same time, that should not be happening. But, you know, uh, so... Coming back to your to, to, to your, your your question of you know further out of the money in the money, um, as you know now the the, the market uh, changed quickly. Okay, and and when I say it changes quickly, last week we got a almost a 22, 23 implied vol. We went to twenty six. Right. If you think about it, yesterday we had a five percent four percent move on the S and P, and we, yeah. we we didn't move that much. On the on the implied vol, okay, so th that means the it was priced in well. a, a lot of the structure of the uh, the option structure changed a lot of since since they put the weekly in place, okay. Since two thousand seventeen, I think it was the CBOE started the the weekly. Uh, uh, the, the structure of the I'm not smart enough. I'm not going to pretend that I'm an option trader and I'm and I'm and I'm, I'm familiar with all of this, but I can tell you that the a lot of the um, underlying change okay so so for you uh, um, what you do, what you don't want to have 
if, if you buy out of the money put, what is the worst case scenario? Translation, the Brazil Journal, Monty Bravo buys Zal and reaches our dollar sign, so 30 billion in custody. Is you are piecing away, you're literally piecing away the table. Yeah. Okay, the time decay yeah. is going against you. So if you are very yeah, exactly. far away, if, if you buy something at 100 with a, and the call at 115, you know, every single day, you're going to be like, fuck, you know, what are the odds of making a 15% yeah. oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. And then you, it's too much, okay? So I think we, right. uh, um, what hedge funds will be doing uh, and what prop traders will be doing, and that's something that I've done in 2016, 2017, which didn't work, but that's the way to do it, is if you look, if you, if you arrive to identify, if you find some uh, uh, cheap, uh, implied vol, and when I say cheap, there is no uh, cheap implied vol is just a fallacy. That's not the way to put it. But right. what you want to find is, is, is trades where you can have those good uh, uh, risk reward. So you put one on the table, and you want to be making 10, 15, 20, 25. So typically, the big hedge funds of this world, they start the year, and every single year, they will allocate 5%. And I'm not taking 50%, like other indicators are saying, 5% of their assets into out-of-the-money stories. Okay, we are talking okay. the Japanese yen when we start the day to do, start the year, goes to 120 to 150, or you know, oil going from, from 60 to 180. And if you if out of this 5%, you know, even only one ID, which is 1%, goes well you're not going to be making three times your money. You're going to be making 15 times your money. So suddenly, this 1% becomes 15%. And you do a bit of active trading and blah, 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 you end up with a 20% return. And this is what hedge funds are doing. They are targeting, you know, 20%. Okay, the, 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 I mean, I'm talking on average. I'm not, uh, you can be making 1,500%, but on average, what you want to be making is 20% uh, uh, every single year. Okay, so if you are a macro guy and say, or oh, this year, uh, uh, the shit is going to happen on that currency or the shit is going to happen on that bond or whatever. And you try to say, okay, what is my implied vol? How much does it cost for that? For that, for that right. I put 1%. If I got 100, I put 1. But I don't want to be making 2. I want to be making 10 or 15. Okay? So this is the outlier, outlier move. And then the rest of your business is, is active trading, is, you know, is paying for the bills, is, you know, placement, is, is whatever, okay? Um, so, so, so for you, if, if I can tell you these days, especially, implied vol is already pretty high, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. And if you, that is even more true if you look at implied vol on FX, if you look at implied vol on, on uh, bonds, uh, that doesn't mean that it's not going to go higher, Okay, because very often when the shit is hitting the fan, it's hitting the fan times 10. Okay, so yeah. when the VIX is at 25, actually there's a good chance that it goes to 40, 50, 60, 70, because that means you are in a bear market. Okay, but uh, um, literally if you put all your odds or all your money into this outlier and nothing happens, you're going to be, I mean, like any, of, any position yeah. that, that, that doesn't work well, but, you know, it's too much... I think what is important f for you, and, and you know it now, um, it's, it's making sure that you don't have all the same strategies that are yeah. uh, uh, under the, uh, uh, let's say, under the same time frame. You don't want to have, th uh, let's say, five positions where it has to be happening in the next two months. Okay, so you need to have, let's say, three in the next two months, one in the next six months, and probably one in a month. Okay. Uh, uh, because if you, and this is something that I, that I teach in the mentoring, which is if you only do one, two, three months always with same kind of positioning, same kind of ID, it's, it's very binary, okay? And in one, two, three months, imagine that you buy, you buy options here, okay, at 25%, let's say, implied vol. And we get an okay earnings season, pretty boring, and we get the midterm election, nothing is happening, okay, for three months, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but let's say nothing happens between now and, and Christmas. Um, and, and the VIX goes from 25 to 15. That means nothing yeah. moves. You're pissing away the theta. You're pissing away the implied vol. Well, every, yeah. Everything. And, and that could happen. Okay, that's, yeah. that's not the scenario because we are in a bear market. 
But let's say it happens, then you're pissing. But if you get, you know, three positions like this, you get one position, which is, you know, uh, uh, actually for vault to right. come down. Okay. I see. Make sense? That that does make sense, but that also brings me to my other point. Um, because I mean, like right now, we are, if we're paying such high prices for, for volatility, um, there's no there's no saying that it's guaranteed to even go up. So, I mean, our risk to reward naturally is lower in a way because right now there's the IV is just higher. I mean, um, the, I, I've been, as I told you, 2016, 2017, I was long vol, 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 and it never worked. And, and the thing yeah, is, yeah. because I'm a bit of an idiot, I didn't uh, uh, connect the dots that, you know, when everything is, is fine, uh, that's why the, the volatility is where it is, okay? Um, uh -huh. so, so I was... Okay. I, 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 that, that, that was obvious, but, you know, I was too contrarian, in other words. Um, it, the, the thing is, when, when you do 25% in ply vol, yes, you are asking for a 3% move. But I think that the beauty uh, trading the options in the U.S. is you get so many names that you can be, you know, either you do ETF. I think th the downside that we have is, is we start the day and, and we look at the SPY, we look at QQQ, and then we look at Tesla, and then we look at NVIDIA, and we could forget that there are, you know, 2,000 other names, okay? And out of the 2,000, uh, 2000, 2000 other names, there are potentially some good risk rewards. So, I think what works well from my experience uh, doing the mentoring is if, if, you, if you look at your 50 stocks that you like, you put the 50 scenarios and in your spreadsheet you say, okay, Microsoft is at, let's say, 250 and I think it's going to go to 290. How can I structure the trade? Then you go to NVIDIA and say NVIDIA is at 130. I think it's going to bounce here and it's going to be to 160 in, in, in a month's time, okay? What are the odds? So let's say I want to be doing uh, 160 out of the money call because actually I think the earnings are going to be good and it's going to rally to 200. So it costs me, let's say, five, and I think I could be making 40. So that means, in other words, I could be making seven times my money, okay, 35 versus my five. So, and, and you do, it's all about, you know, structuring the trade over and over and, and see if there is a good risk reward because otherwise we confuse and say oh because there is a 25 percent in by fall there is absolutely no trade and sometimes you look at the uh, at the chart you look at the fundamental the quantitative and then you look at the option chain and say okay actually i like it because i can structure a trade where instead of having my 2.5 to 1 i'm gonna have a 4 to 1 or 5 to 1 yeah okay Make sense? Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's, um, and I have a follow-up question though because uh, I know how you mentioned how it does take a while to connect the dots for uh, the one to three month and you know further yeah. time frame portfolio. But right now, like how you're describing the like shorter term active trading, I'm having a little bit of trouble connecting the dots on that because I know some of the things you mentioned were leading. Uh, stocks and lagging stocks within their respective sectors yep. and versus the market. So, I mean, like, can you just kind of break down and yeah. uh, you can like systemize like how, I know you said uh, you're looking at different things like order flow or, yeah. uh, you know, OPEX, but it's kind of hard to <laughs> illustrate. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it took me 20 years and I'm, st and, and I'm still right. learning. Yeah. Um, uh, so, it, it, Active trading, you know, uh, as I said to Jaime and to all of you before, is when you do active trading, like you know, those prop trading, the way I do it, the, the way they do it in the U.S. is every single day you want to be finding the names that are that are going to be moving. Okay, mm -hmm. you're going to be moving. By definition, every single day you're going to have ten earnings. Okay, so naturally they're going to be moving. Is it going to be something where you're going to be making money? Not necessarily, because you know that they get thousands of thousands of traders that will be doing exactly the same as you okay so what you need when you do active trading you need to find these days the way i'm making money is reading the tape so when there is a news i think okay this is the news it's going to have an implication then i can go for size if i go against the trend if i go for the earnings you know if you look at nvidia i think it was three weeks ago it went up on the first day on the earnings then it went down like 10 percent okay so earnings momentum these days because it's binary yeah, and one day is everything is up when when they everything is down is pretty hard so active trading what i tell people is 
you know, can you do it? Do you really want to do it? Okay, that is very different. That is, yeah. When when people look at the market, you know, it's it's the myth of the trader, and they say, oh, that's the, you know, that's fantastic, those guys. It's it's something when I when you do one to three months, you can do some research. You can you know be putting a position. It's not the same as reading the tape, putting big position, be uh, looking at at levels that are much tighter. Okay, do I recommend that for anyone? Ask my wife; she will tell you. <laughs> She will tell you to do something different. I don't think this is necessarily a good thing. I get that most people would love to do it. It's super, super, super hard. Okay. Uh, uh, and if you don't have any edge, if you just want to be trading in right. or Tesla, you're better off, you know, uh, uh, doing something else. Uh, do, do another business. I can't, you know, I can't really be t- teaching that, you know, Unless the guy comes with me in a trading room and and sit with me for a month, okay, really? or comes yeah. to or comes to my to my office here and, and we work together and I teach him everything, uh, everything that I know, which is not big, but you know. yeah. Uh, other than that, you know, uh, um, it's I think starting with a special situation, what you want to have for any time frame is you want a catalyst, okay? It it's right. it's it's. If it's just trading the market, you're better off trading the S&P because that means that you don't need necessarily a single catalyst. I think the beauty of trading stocks is if you work hard, you're going to find those catalysts, okay? Yeah. And, and, yeah. and if you really put the hours, I guess that like any of us, when you start, you say, okay, I know this name. You don't even know if this name, you know, what are the competitors? After five days, you know another competitor. So that means if there is a warning, you understand why the other stock is down by 50 bips or 1%. And, and okay. the, more, the better you get, the, better you, the more you're going to uh, connect the dots. Okay? Make sense? Yeah. I, I, I get what you're saying. You have to, kind of, you have to really be uh, fully committed to your own I know, mind, it's, really. But. It's, it's 100%. Uh, forget about, you know, walking the dogs on the beach. It's... It, it's a fallacy. It's you know, uh, it, yeah. it's a joke. Unfortunately, that would be nice. And you know, uh, if you do active trading, the one to three months, I think y- y- we have to understand that most of my clients get a job, okay, a day to day job. They get a family, um, and and they 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 can't be doing active trading. That is something, and and I won't tell. Uh, Literally, I will not advise for them to do to do it unless they got a proper setup and a real knowledge. Okay, the one to three right. months, which is you know, you look at the macro, you do quantitative, you do qualitative. I know it works. I've been doing that for seven years. I know it works for people. Right. Okay. Okay. I'll take another question from someone else. If anyone's got something, otherwise, otherwise we I go to bed. No one. Uh, let me just ask this real quick. So, like, yeah. uh, just like a quick example, I know you mentioned some uh, forex trading within yeah. your current active trading, but like yeah. on the equity side, what would you what would you look at? So, if you're, li- I know you mentioned the le- or the laggards yesterday. What would, what would be like an example of that in today's market? So, uh, the, the the best way to do it is something that I try to to explain, or maybe I, I'm I'm bad at explaining, but. When I look at the the index um, uh, moves and then the sectors moves and the industry moves, that tells me who are the winners. So it's pretty obvious that over the last six months, uh, um, uh, um, the, the leaders have been XLE. Okay, you don't need to be to be super intelligent to know that XLE right. have been outperforming the market. If you look over the last five days, XLE has been pretty strong as well. Okay, so oil is up, is up ten percent, whereas the market is yeah. is flattish. Okay, if you look at the other industries that have been struggling, guess what? Home builders have been struggling. They are not performing by five percent the market because of what? Because the the ten years went from three three twenty to three forty. So, what you're gonna have is is you, your time frame is gonna be you're gonna have different time frames. You're gonna have your winners and losers on the day. Okay, so if you look at the day like today, you take your industries, which industries have been so let me check quickly. That's gonna be easier. Oh, I'm gonna be putting my industries. Okay. 
and today okay so we got all services okay let me up scroll that so today we got all services up three percent and we got steals down four percent so still today was down four percent why because you know as i mentioned before uh new cork came with a profit warning okay uh, so that means that is your leaders and laggards for the day. What about the leaders and laggards for the last five days? What about the last month? What about the last three months? Okay, and that's going to tell you about the market. The similarly, if you look at Meta, if you look at Facebook, that was a big leader until six or nine months ago. And now this is a dog, a pure dog. Every single day it's underperforming the market. Okay, so if you've been long meta saying, oh, it's a leader, it's a leader, it, 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 it's over. It's the same as NVIDIA. NVIDIA is not leading the, the, the semiconductor index. Okay, so that means you're going to be looking at performances of those industries versus their sectors and the overall market. And for each of single industries, you're going to what I call the drill down. Okay, so in the 4x4, this is something I explained which is, you know, drilling down and saying, you know, who are the winners and, and the losers. And that's going to tell you a lot because obviously price action, unfortunately, is a leading indicator or unfortunately or unfortunately is a very good leading indicator. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a million. Uh, is in-person mentoring a possibility after the four by four? You mean uh, uh, sitting together? Sitting together... Uh, because normally I do I do online, okay? I do uh, so we, you got your screen, I got my screen. We we talk for one two hours uh, every single session. So um, in person, this is something that I don't do. I had the, I tried a bit. So just before COVID, I wanted to do uh, something with uh, Infinity. Actually, I wanted to to have people coming to me in the trading room or be uh, trained by other people. Maybe that is something that I should restart. Um, I think that that was a brilliant idea, not because it was only mine, but uh, you know, for people to come in a trading room learning uh, and learning from macro guys and any and other equity guys would have been um, a good thing. But normally we do, we do, we do online. Um, actually with me, we do online. Okay, any, anything else? I'm done. Yeah. Um, I think this, it's a good format. Um, I like it. I hope you, you enjoyed it. Um, yes, I think we should do that more often. Um, um, definitely, I think we, we need to bring more people. Um, so um, let people know that this is, a, this is a good thing to do. Uh, thank you for your questions. Thank you for being active on the community. Let's grow that community. And uh, for those of you who have done the 4x4 and the mentoring, obviously, uh, you are, as long as you get an ID, you can join on Saturday for the free group mentoring session. Um, and, um, and, and if you are in London, uh, there is a drink next Thursday. So uh, DM me if you want to join. Uh, that would be great to see you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Raime, everyone. Uh, Rick Ross. Uh, I like those names, Emilian. Um, and, um, and, and we talk soon, and I'll be on the community tomorrow. Bye-bye, everyone. Good night.